Hey everyone, Lysis here. Today we're back with the computational redstone tutorial series. In this episode, we'll be covering subtraction. Now, one thing about this video though, is you're going to actually have to know how to do addition. And I already have a video on that, which I'll have linked uh, up in the info card above and down in the description below. So if you guys don't know anything about addition or have very little experience with it, make sure to refer to that video and you'll have a decent grasp at it. And if you already know addition, then don't worry about it. You can move on with the video. Anyway, let's get into it. So before we get to the actual redstone part of this, we'll be going over the logic behind subtraction. And one thing I want to clarify is that we're not actually going to be subtracting here. We're going to be adding negative numbers. So this is actually a really significant difference because the logic behind pure subtraction and addition is fundamentally different. So in subtraction, we have borrowing logic, meaning uh, let's say, for example, we have 21 minus 9. So obviously the answer is 12, but how do we get 12? We borrow a value from the digit next to it, and then we subtract down as if it's normal. So in binary, we can borrow the same way. But instead of borrowing, let's use simpler logic. Let's do carry logic, some logic that we already know. So we just need to find a way to get negative binary numbers. So one thing is we're not actually using negative binary numbers. We're actually using what's called a two's complement. And a two's complement is a positive number, positive binary number, binary coming from two. So positive binary number that's able to substitute for a negative binary number because they share a similar property. So in order to get a two's complement, we need to first invert the number. Then we add one to that inverted number. So let's take uh, 101, which is 5, for example, and apply 2's complement. So we invert, then we add 1. So our final answer here is 011. Now having the 0 up here is important because the number of digits we start, uh, the number of bits we start off with are 3 bits. So we want to end up with 3 bits here. So this is actually important in complements of any base, having the same number of digits, because the digits or bits or like place values are actually significant for what the complement does. So let's go back here. So we have our two's complement right there. And one thing a two's complement is able to do is you're able to reapply two's complement back to it and get us the original answer. So if we apply two's complement to three right here, one, zero, zero, or three digit three, then we add one, one, zero, one, we get our original answer back. So that's actually important in the number of bits. So let's try uh, doing a subtraction problem using two's complement. So we let's do 101 minus 011. And we want to have this leading zero here since we have, we're doing a three bit subtraction since our uh, value with the higher number of bits is three bits. So let's do this. But we don't want to do this exactly. We want to use two's complement. So 101 plus 101 actually, because 101 is a two's complement of 011, as we uh, demonstrated right here. So let's add our quote unquote negative number, which is 101, and then just do this. And our final answer here is 1010. Now, like I mentioned before, the number of bits is important. So we're only looking at these three bits right there 010, which is two. Then we have this extra bit up front, which is known as the sign bit. And this indicates whether or not the final value we have is a positive number or if it's a two's complement. So one thing I want to mention though is this value right here, this three bit value is what's called the magnitude. So let me write that down. Magnitude. So our magnitude is always going to be the same number of bits as the equation, while our sign bit is going to be a bit in front of that, where that indicates whether or not the magnitude is positive or a two's complement. So what happens if we do 011 minus 101? Let's apply to his complement. So we do 011 plus 011. And we add down. We have a magnitude of 6. And we have a sign bit of 0. So having a sign bit of 0 means that our magnitude is actually a 2's complement of our actual answer. So 6 here is obviously not 2. So we just need to reapply two's complement. So we apply it to this. So zero, zero, one, then add one, zero, one, zero. Our final answer ends up being three bit two and our zero gives us a negative sign. So this is how two's complement works. 
So in order to explain how two's complement exactly works, we'll be going over 10's complement. So 10 here represents base 10. So we'll just be working with uh, decimal numbers, numbers that we're normally used to. So what exactly is a complement? Like I mentioned before, it's a number that's able to substitute for a negative number because it shares a very similar property. So let's go over that right now. So we have our positive number 54 and it's negative. So what property does negative 54 have with its positive? Well, this property is that if you add them together, you get the answer zero. So we just need to find a number, a number n, that's able to substitute a peer for negative 54 that can add with 54 and get a zero. So 54 plus a positive number that equals zero. Now, normally that's not possible, but like I mentioned before, the number of digits is actually significant. So what if we have two digits zero here? So now we're working with two digits all across the board. So we still can't find a number that's able to fit in here. So let's add another digit, a digit that's not significant to the two digits that we already have, a one. So now we have a value that's able to add to 54 because we're still working with two digits of zero and we have this extra bit up front. And as I demonstrated before, when you're doing subtraction, you have that sign bit. So here in this case, we have what's called a sign digit. So this one is going to represent a sign digit for the two zeros that we have here. So 100 is not actually 100, it's positive zero zero. So let's actually find a number for that. So n in this case would be equal to 46. So let's actually do that. Uh, let's do a 66 minus 54. And 66 minus 54 is 12. Now, what if we do tens complement? So we do 66 plus 46. Our final answer would be 112. So the significant digits here, the magnitude is 12, while the sign digit is one, indicating we have our actual answer 12. So what if we do 44 minus 54? Answer is negative 10. And then we do 44 plus 46, we get 90. So the sign digit here is zero. So this digit means that we are currently in a tens complement. So we just need to reapply tens complement to 90 in order to get us 10. So our final answer is actually negative 10. Now, a quick word from our sponsor. Shadowverse is a free to play strategy card game for both PC and mobile devices. The game features amazing anime style artwork for both the cards and the characters, and also features amazing English and Japanese voice acting with subtitles in various languages, including but not limited to English, Korean, French, and many more. So for the smart people who like subs, there you go. You can click the link in the description down below in order to play the game for free. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So now let's actually get to the redstone part of this. So the algorithm to get a two's complement is invert add one. So all we need to do to get the two's complement is first we need to invert. So let's invert the inputs by going like that and adding a redstone torch. Let's get some levers. And then I'm just going to stack this upwards seven times. Oh, let's try that again. That was not right. Expand one up, stack seven up. So now we have our invert and we add one by using the carry in since this is our already built in add one. So now that we have this, we have our subtractor. Very simple. You just put an adder and then you just add a single tick back here by inverting everything and you add one through the carry in. But one thing about using an adder here is that we're able to actually switch between addition and subtraction if we use logic gates. So what is there a way for us to conditionally invert? So invert whenever we want to and not invert if we don't want to. Well, in order to do that, we'll be using XOR gates because XOR gates can function as a conditional inverter. So let's do this in order to demonstrate it. And then let's get some comparators in subtract mode like this. And levers. So let's say this left value here is the invert and the right value here is our input. So we input one, we get an output of one. If we input zero, output of zero. If we invert, however, we input a zero, output a one. 
input a one, output a zero. So we have a conditional inverter here by using one of the inputs as the invert and the other inputs as the primary input. So to that end, we can actually just add XOR gates to the front of the input and use and then chain one of the inputs all the way across all eight bits and then have individual inputs for the other input. And then we're able to have a conditional subtractor. So we only subtract whenever we want to and we add in every other situation. So we can switch between addition and subtraction. And now one design I like to do for this is just have the inputs go in like that. And voila. So we have our XOR like this. So we input like that and then we take that XOR and stack up seven times. And then over here, we're going to use repeaters. And then we're going to chain everything upwards like this. Not like that, like this. And then I'm just going to put rest on here and stack these up. And then we have our primary inputs over on this right side. Let's get rid of that. And we can invert by toggling this input right here. So this is invert. It inverts every input for all eight bits. And then we're able to input our values right here. So now we can conditionally invert whenever we want to, and we can uh, do subtraction whenever we choose to, or addition whenever we choose to. Now, one thing is you can also add another XOR to the other side. So you can subtract either left minus right or right minus left as well. And I'm actually going to do that design quickly as well. So for this subtraction, we're actually going to stagger the design a little bit. We're going to come down with a slab over here. And then we're just pretty much making the same XOR like this. So we in, uh, compare the subtract mode. Get redstone dust. Now these redstone dust here connecting, it's okay because when you stack upwards, it's going to actually stack the blocks up as well, cutting them off. So let's uh, world edit this upwards. We're going to expand one. And stack seven upwards. And now we just need to chain the inputs over here as well. Repeater, block, and slap tower. So let's put this right there like that. Stack seven upwards. Put this lever right there. Now we're able to subtract either right from left and left from right. And the only thing that you need to keep track of is making sure that you add one using the carry end over here. So now we have a fully functioning subtractor adder unit. Anyway, that's it for this episode. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe in order to see more videos coming out in the future. So my next episode, I'm thinking about doing multiplication, which is gonna be pretty cool. And I'm also be coming out with a corresponding subtraction episode in my calculator series where I'll be focusing more on the build aspects of it and how to apply this in a calculator. So one thing that you guys might remember from my uh, from my two's complement explanation is that if you do like three minus five, where you're supposed to come out with a negative answer, you come out with a two's complement answer. So I'll be finding a way to get around that in order to represent the binary numbers in a way that we're able to better understand or for the system to better understand. But anyways, uh, if you guys enjoyed it, like I said, make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you all next time.